in here, we're going to sing Let It Rise. This song says, Burning in My Soul, since I walked in this church today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Let the glory of the Lord rise.
Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Let me see this for a moment. Praise God. I just give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor. I thank God that we are here in the presence of the Holy God, a righteous God, a powerful God. I thank God for the brethren in the house of the Lord. I thank God for everyone. Amen. That have been putting their shoulders to the plow. Amen. That has been carrying the work. Amen. For the last few weeks. Uh, we are not being in this house, but we are in another house. Amen. Just glorifying God. And I, I thank God for that privilege and for the brethren that as you put your shoulder to the plow and carry the work of the Lord. Amen. That God is blessing you. That God is working out everything. In your lives, I, I thank God that he, uh, He's not a partial God. No. He's a God that wherever you go, whatever you do, as long as you're doing it in His name, the Bible says He's there to bless and to do us good. Amen. I thank God for the brethren, amen, the musicians in the house today, and the worship team, amen. and everyone in the keep the body of Christ together. And as we heard all the testimonies from Jamaica, and everything that happened there, it was a glorious time. I've been going to Jamaica for over, for this is our 11th convention. And I'm telling you, this is the best convention of all the 11th here. Yeah. I've been in the house. Yeah. And it was a blessing to see the unity and to see the community get involved oh. in everything that was being done. Amen. And not just save people, but also unsaved people. And I heard a lot of and say people making commitment that they're trying, they're gonna put, they're trying to put their life together and to change your lives, amen, and try to, to come to where they need to be in God, amen. So I thank God for all that God has done there. God is doing a great work. Uh, I thank God for Dr. Lee, amen, who traveled with me to Jamaica. And I love Dr. Lee because he's a man of the word. He's a man with in-depth in the word of God. He don't compromise the word of God. He will not. Defray from the word of God. You want to hold it together in its totality. Amen. And so the brethren can have the word in them and have the true word of God in them because it, unless we have the true word of God in us, we will not be able to stand in this day. And uh, I just like the, the lessons even today that was read. Amen. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. I like that. And the, to the angels of the church in Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shut it, and shut it and no man openeth. This is such an important verse of scripture that if we understand this verse of scripture, we will just leave ourselves committed into God's hand. Like Jesus Christ, he is the son of David. He has the key. Amen. Amen. And that key has been given to the church of the living God. And when God opened the door, no man People of God, I want you to get this in your spirit. If you get that in your spirit, no man can shut a door that God has opened for you. You must be fearful to walk in it, or you don't want to walk in it, or you don't want to do anything about it. But once the door is open, no man can shut it. It's up to you what you do with that door that he has opened for you. So let's just stand for a moment, amen, and just to declare the word of God, I want to, don't get too long today with us because we all are tired, I'm still so tired, amen, and I didn't get back to my bed until very late last night because, you know, I have a job to do, it doesn't matter if it's uh, what it is, uh, I still have to come, still have to prepare to do what the Lord says I should do, amen. amen. So this is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. We may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I want us to just venture out today. Amen. On a topic. Amen. That is such a, a powerful topic. Amen. And many of us, we missed it, we don't understand it. Amen. Because when we heard of the word bondage, 
Amen. We don't really understand in totality what it is. But the Bible speaks of bondage. Amen. And, and Brother Paul, amen, one of the greatest ap apostles of the New Testament, he has given us, amen, his, his comment, amen, on, on, on the word uh, on bondage, amen. And he teach a lot on bondage. And I, I just want to help us today as we will start this journey, amen, to, to look at it, that we will understand what bondage is and what it means, in a sense, to be free. Because the Bible says his people suffer, why? Because we lack knowledge. Amen. His people suffer, why? Because we, because we lack the knowledge of the word of God. And because we lack the knowledge of the word of God, we do things that have nothing to do with God. Amen. And we have put ourselves in bondage because we are not following the teaching, amen, of the word of God. Paul reminds us that we should study to show ourselves approved. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And it's so important that we look at the scripture. He said, rightly dividing the word of truth. If there was nothing to divide, they would not, Paul would not encourage us. And I want to give you a little bit of background on Paul. Because when I study the, the, the life of Paul, Paul has been, he has been prosecuted in such a way. Amen. He has been through shipwreck. He has been through different beatings and all the body experience. Yes. There's so much things happening, Brother Paul, right? And even in prison, even in prison, he did not give up. He stayed true to his calling, and he wrote to turn up the New Testament. And the, the thing we want to understand that the, 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 all the New Testament epistles, they were written to the churches. Yes. And many of these churches, there were churches that was planted by the Apostle Paul. Amen. And during the time of planting these churches, many things have happened in this time. And because of what was happening in those days, remember, Paul was the Pharisees of the Pharisees. It means that he knows the Messiah law inside out. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel. You got to understand that this man would know the law, the, the, the law so well because he said he knew it so well that he followed it and it was blameless. But he says when he met Christ on Damascus Road and he come to knowledge of who Jesus Christ is, he said all these things he counted but down. So what does it mean? It's built, it's foolishness. Amen. Amen. So when he come to true knowledge, all of that did not mean a thing to him. So he wanted to educate the church. He wanted to educate the body of Christ. And when you study the word of Paul and his writing, you, where do you think all his writing comes from? All his writing was taken from the Old Testament. Amen. So when he said rightly dividing the word of truth, he himself had to make that division. Amen. He all had to put things in the right order for the New Testament church and so that we could understand. Remember Paul. Paul was the man that was going around killing Christians. That's right. That was his job. He's going around persecuting the church of the true and living God. But the same man that was persecuting the church of the living God, he got a wake up call one day when he was persecuting the church and when he recognized that. This is the, the thing that to me was so awesome. That when he, he, he met Jesus at the master's road, he knew exactly who he was persecuting. Right. He was not guessing. So he knew about Jesus. He knew everything about him. But he was purposed to obey the Pharisees and the Messiah law until he made recognize that this is not what I should be doing. I should be following the teaching of Jesus Christ and his apostle. And he himself, amen, at the end, became the greatest apostle of all times. And God has used him mightily. Oh, hallelujah. And he was assigned to teach the Gentiles. That was his job. So it, it means that if that was the assignment, when he was finished, he said, I have finished my course. He had done everything that he was called to do. He left it in writing. Amen. So that today, the church of the living God, we should not be wondering what we should be doing. 
because he has given us the word inspired by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that we have something to follow. So it is very important that we understand the teaching of the New Testament and we should live by the New Testament because we are the church of the living God. We are the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are following Jesus. We are not following Moses. So we cannot allow to go, we cannot go back in bondage. Hallelujah. I want to say it again. We cannot go back in bondage. And we're going to look to scripture and look, look at what Paul says bondage is. Amen. Because we, you know, I, I try to look up the word bondage, you know, and, and, and there's not much about it. Yeah. You know, so so we, 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 we as a church, we got to understand bondage. Because if we don't understand bondage, we can live in, be living in bondage and not even know. Right. Amen. So the term bondage can happen in the body or in the soul. If we speak of the soul, then we must also refer unto obsession by devils. But if we are speaking of the body, then we can refer unto the devils in the body. The scripture teaches many forms of bondages, such as Israel in Egypt. So we understand Israel in Egypt as a bondage. They were slaves. That's right. Hallelujah. So we understand the slave bondage of the Israelite in Egypt. And we remember many of us today, we still have that bondage of Egypt, that Egypt mentality. Even though we came out of the world, even though we came out of darkness, and we're supposed to be in this marvelous life, our minds are still in bondage. Our bodies are still in bondage because we're still using the body to commit sin. Amen. And we're supposed to be free from it. Amen. But we, our minds are still in bondage and because our minds are still in bondage, our mind, spirit is controlling the body and the soul and so we sin against God. So we are still in bondage even though we call ourselves Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in each of us slave are, are they to be thrown in prison, being bound in in, and the like. So when you're in prison, you're basically in bondage. So, you know, you, you don't have the freedom to move, you don't have the freedom to do things, you don't have the freedom to, 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 to go where you want to go and to do the things you want to do. So you're limited to what you can do. Hallelujah. But in Christ, we are not limited. Hallelujah. The Paul said, I can do all things. He did not say some things, but all things through Christ that strengthened us. So when we are in Christ, we are free. Amen. Hallelujah. We are not in bondage. In the teaching of the Apostle Paul, he taught bondage was obedience unto the Mosaic, Mosaic law. And through obeying even one law of Moses, a person is in bondage to obey all 613 laws of Moses. Right. <coughs> what a bondage. What a bondage. So we need to understand the, bond, the different type of bondage that we can be in. Our minds can be in bondage. Why? Because we are translated of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom, but we are still living in that same mental state. Yes, That's why Paul said we are to renew our minds in the word of God. Because if our mind is not renewed, then we are still in the place of bondage. Yes, oh, hallelujah. So we got to understand that. So in Luke 13 and verse 16, he said, and art not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond and the Sabbath day. So here was a woman who was sick for 18 years in bondage, in the bondage, sickness in her body. So the Lord Jesus here revealed that Satan had bound this woman for 18 years. This bondage was in her body, for his physical body was bound and needed deliverance from the bondage of devil, of the devil. So here the this woman was bound and in sickness or uh, and in pain in and 18 years. She was in bondage and need deliverance. Many of us today we have been going to church for years. 
but we're still in bondage. We're in bondage by our pastors. Because we can't do nothing unless the pastor said to do it. Because we haven't got a mind of our own. We're not studying to show ourselves approved. We're not reading the word of God. We realize today many of us don't can't even pray unless we have somebody to come and pray for us. I want us to understand that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the Bible says, if it dwells in you, it quit your mortal body. I have, no, I have no more power than you have. I have no more power than you have. I might have different gifts, but it's the same spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So you have that same authority. You can get on your knees. You can pray. You can lay hands on yourself. You can do all this, and you can believe God. Amen. You have that authority. There's some with gift of healing, some with gift of prophecy, but we still have the same spirit. You might not be able to prophesy, but we all can pray. Amen. We all can pray. Hallelujah. So we've got to release ourselves and our minds from this mindset that we need pastor to pray for everything for us. We need to go to the other, to somebody, somebody higher in the church to get prior the, the, the deacons and the evangelists and all that stuff. You need to understand that you have that same power in you that you can pray for God to release you from the circumstance and everything, you don't need to be in bondage when you have that power and that authority in you. You need to understand who you are and what you are in Christ in order for you to be free and not in bondage. So in order for your mind to be free, you've got to be able to know the word of God and place your mind, renew your mind so that you know where you stand and who you are in Christ so that you can make a declaration Amen. That you are free. That your minds are free. That you are not again entangled in the yoke of bondage. Your mind has been set free. Why? Because I have the Holy Ghost. I have the power of God in me. Amen. I can pray. I can fast. And Father says something can only come to fast and prayer. Don't expect me to fast for you. You gotta fast fasting for yourself. You gotta start getting your knee. You gotta start filling up that relationship with God so that that bondage. Has been broken and you have been set free so that you can carry out the work of God in your life. Amen. Second Corinthians 2 and verse, Second Corinthians 11 and verse 18 said, Seeing that many glory of many glory of the flesh, I glory also. For he suffer fools gladly. Seeing ye yourselves are wise. For ye suffer if a man be in you, it bring you into bondage. If a man devour you, if a man take off you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you in the face, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we be, had been weak, albeit be it, where to ever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am both also. The Apostle Paul had raised up the church in Corinth. Paul is the one who planted that church in Corinth. And there was a lot of things going on in Corinth. Why? Because the Judaizers and all these people, they were coming back to the church that Paul planted and they tried to bring them back into bondage, into, back into the Mosaic law. And I feel like I've been straining. Get the turn my mic up a bit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Apostle Paul had raised up the church in Corinth. Yet as he was going, going preaching elsewhere, these brethren were taken, taken into bondage by those who practiced Mosaic law. So even though Paul was brought in the churches, these Judaizers and stuff, they were coming back. Back into bondage. Amen. Amen. Because he, he had been free from that. Amen. And if you remember, Paul, even on his journey, they were trying to put Paul, Barnabas, back in bondage that he had to be circumcised. 
because they were trying to put them back in bondage because they themselves were not free from the law. They did not see Jesus Christ as their Messiah. So they believe that they still have to do the circumcision. They still believe they have to do all that. But for the Gentiles church, we did not have to do that. We don't need to follow the Mosiah law. We need to follow Jesus Christ and the, his apostles and his teaching. And the thing is, when you look at Jesus' life and his teaching, the only thing he taught was about the kingdom of God. He had taught nothing else. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hallelujah. He wants us to understand where we're supposed to be, what we're supposed to be, who we're supposed to be worshiping. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. And that because of false brethren, I know we're brought in, who came in privilege to spy on our liberty, which we have in Christ. Jesus, that they might bring us into a bondage to whom we gave peace by subjection, not, no, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. Amen. We got to understand here, here in the epistle unto the Galatian church, the apostle Paul speaks of the word bondage as obedience unto the Messiah law. Amen. So we when we go under the, the Mosaic law, it means that we're putting ourselves back in bondage. And I want to teach this on bondage because it's very important that I teach this because many of my friends that I, I've, I've known in the Christendom have gone back. Have gone back into the Messiah, the, the Masonic, the, the Masonic uh, temple. They're going back on the the, 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 the laws of Moses, they go back under, the, under the, they said they're Christian, but yet they still try to keep the Sabbath. And, and, and we as New Testament church, we are free from the law of Moses. Right. Oh, hallelujah. We got to understand that. Yeah. Here in this apostle, and the Galatians, the apostle Paul, Paul speaks of the word bondage as obedient unto Mosaic law. This church was fallen from grace by their obedience unto Mosaic laws, and the Apostle Paul was warning them concerning these bondages. These were bondages. These are stuff that we need to move away from. These are things that we need to be clear in our spirit who we are, what we're doing. In order for us to get the blessings of God in our lives, we need to hold true to who we are. Because we can be in bondage if we don't know the word of God for ourselves, we got to know the word of God, understand what it is to be in bondage. Amen. To be in bondage does not necessarily mean that you're in chain. That's right. Your mind can be in bondage because of what you believe. Amen. And I want us to get this clearly in our spirit because if we understand it clearly, then we will recognize that our lives will be different. Because Paul says, God, he will not... James said, even God will not bless a whoever a man. So you need to know who you are, where you stand, and what you believe in order for you to get the fullness and the blessings of God in our lives. Galatians chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4 says, Now I say that the here, as long as he is a child, different nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all, but his on the tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in what? Bandage under the element of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and because we are sons God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying of a father Where, wherefore thou art no more a servant listen church no more a servant 
but a son, and if a son, then and hear of God what? Through Christ. Obey then, when we e know not God, he did serve unto them, which by nature are no gods, but now after that we have known God, or rather are known of God, how oh, turn ye again to the weak and beggarly element where unto ye desire again to be in what? Bondage. He observed days, months, times, and years. I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you my labor in vain. So Paul is saying, after all I have taught you, after all I am trying to explain to you, how can you fall back into the beggarly elements? Observance of days. Church, I want you to understand this. Because I want the church of the living God to know who they are. Because the Bible says we suffer because we lack knowledge. And many are in bondage today because they lack the knowledge of the word of God. I want Southeast Hope Assembly to get the word of God in them that when you go out and you somebody confront you on the road or in the supermarket or in the mall or at work and want to know what you stand for and try to tell you things that you know it does not line up according to New Testament doctrine, you must be able to defend it. Amen. You must be able to stand up and know who you are. I remember in my early years as a Christian, just being baptized, very anxious, very on fire, want to know the word of God so much. And I was in this tour over on 32nd Avenue called, uh, uh, there's a store, I don't even want to call the name there. But anyway, I was in that store, and while I was in that store, I was approached by a woman. And she came up to me and she said, are you a Christian? I said, yes, I am. She said, do you, do you want to study the word of God? I said, yes. I, I love to study the word of God. She said, she said, I have a Bible class at my home, a Bible study at twice a week. You can be a part of it. You can come if you want to understand scripture, if you want to know what the scripture says. And as a young man in my first, as a young Christian in my first year, uh, I, I, I thank God that I, I had applied the word of God because in my first year, uh, as a Christian, I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Because I purpose not to be a denominational Christian. I wanted to be a servant of God. I wanted to be a man of God. I wanted to understand the word of God for myself. So I, I did not want to go to Bible college or none of those stuff where I, I'm going to get caught up in religion. Uh, so I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation my first year as a Christian. Now that I was invited to get deeper study in the word of God, I figured, well, this might be an opportunity. Maybe God is sending some help. And as I went to the, 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 the house and started to go to Bible college, I, was, I had belonged to another church, amen, at the time. And while I was in this church, I recognized that there were, there were more of these brethren in that same Bible college, in that same Bible class, in the Bible college, but there's this house Bible class that they had. And while I was in, the, the, in, the Bible, in this Bible class, they start teaching stuff. And as they start teaching stuff, the Holy Ghost in me start just pointing out their heralds. Why? Because I have the word of God in me already. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because if there's nothing in you, nothing can come out. Right. Amen. There's nothing to brought back to your memory. Yeah. So because they've gone to the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, everything that they were saying that was off key, the Holy Spirit was allowing me to see them. So as they were talking and they were going, and one of the things uh, in, in the Bible, in the Bible college, in, in the Bible, in this Bible study that they were telling me, they asked me a question, and they said they were asking everybody, I'll give you one thousand dollars, amen, to, to if you can tell me when the church, when the day of worship was changed from the, the from Saturday to Sunday, uh, and that was, was just a confirmation to tell me who these people were. Because they come in both clothes. They're not saying, I am this person. Yes. But they came in as, an, as just coming to the word of God. And in the process that they're trying to now allow, try to indoctrinate me and convert me into their religion. 
So when I recognize that I start speaking to them and as I ask them questions, and then they get their postures, because why? The person that were in the Bible teaching their lesson did not know as much as I know, because they did not know the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. They only know about what their religion taught them. So as I start talking about the word of God, guess what? I end up, they end up getting the, their old pastors. And they brought the pastors and they get the end up throw me out of that meeting. Why? Because they figure I know too much. They could not tie me up in their religion. But you know what? The sad thing about it, even though I left that place, many of those brethren from that ministry I was with end up in that religion. And they're still in that religion today. Hallelujah. Uh, we have to be so careful, and I want the church of God to know the word of God so that you can understand the word of God. Because there are many out there, the Bible said there are wolves wearing wolves. Yes, Amen. They are out there in sheep clothes and pretending that they are, uh, they are, uh, are children of light. But they are not children of light. They are children of the devil seeking souls to build their religion. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not building religion. We are building a kingdom. We are citizens in the kingdom of the Most High God. That's who we are. And we as citizens in the kingdom of God, we got to understand what's happening outside of the kingdom. And if it's not lined up with what the kingdom says it should be, then we know there are none of his. So we got to understand that. So the apostle point out here that all Jews were in bondage under the element of the world. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Meaning, touch not, taste not, anger not, in accordance unto the Messiah's law. And today, many of us, many are out there, and they are putting the church of the living God in bondage. Why? Because they lack their knowledge in the word of God. Today, in our Christendom, we find that the, the true and living, the church of the true and living God, they are so caught up in the hype. They, they're in such, there's so, so much hype. If you go to a church today and there's not a hype, nobody wants to stay in there. That's right. They want to hear the preacher preaching and somebody's on the keyboard, bang, 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 bang. By the time they leave out there, all they remember is the song in their ears. That's right. They have nothing to stand on. You go in there, they're moving in the spirit, and at the end of it all, as soon as they sit in their chair, they fall asleep. The devil put them to sleep. They have no appetite for the word of God. Right. Oh, hallelujah. But that got to change. Amen. This is a schoolroom. The Bible says we are in the schoolroom. Yeah. When you go to school, you don't fall asleep. Right. Come on, church of God. Yeah. In the olden days, you have to go to school to have devotion. Yes. And after devotion, you go in your different classes. Yes. Don't it? Yeah. And what you do, they teach you math, English. Psychology, they teach whatever they're teaching, they're teaching, and guess what? At the end of it all, they can pass the test. If not, they can't get qualified to get a job. Yeah. The church of living God today, they can't get a job. Glory. Because they don't know the word of God, they have been fooled, they have been made a fool of. Why? Because they don't know the word of God, they have been robbed by false teachers and false preachers because they don't know the word of God. It's time that the church of the living God wise up. Yes, sir. Get out of the hype. Yes. Study to show yourself approved. That's what's going to help you. Yes. Do you realize you can't go in, the, in your workplace and talk about God? Try to go in there speaking tongues that think you're a man. You better have the word of God in you. When testing come in the workplace, when trials come to workplace, you can't get down on your knees and pray near, they're going to fire you. Yes, Lord. Amen. You better have the word of God to help you to stand as Paul says, I'm in the last stand. stand. Glory. That's right. It's time the church gets out of this hype. Yes, sir. Everything happening in one church is happening in every church. Everybody wants it, it sounds good. You go to every church, bang, 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 and all you hear is noise. Mm -hmm. You leave out there with a headache mm -hmm. instead of being blessed. Oh. Walk up there full of sweat, sweaty clothes. Yeah. And that's it. You can't stand against the wiles of the devil. Oh. The devil slay you every time. Yeah. Every time he 
didn't show up his head, he lay his foot you on your back. It's time the church of the living God be able to stand against the walls of the devil and the forces of the law. Stand. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the helmet of salvation. Have your feet trapped in the preparation of the gospel of peace. You need to have that church of God. You need to get yourself out of bondage. Get your mind out of bondage. Get your body and your soul out of bondage. Because your spirit already sealed until the day of redemption. You got to know how to get your body and your soul out of bondage. Oh, glory to God, church of the living God. It's time the church of the living God start to get into the word of God. Start to be able to digest the word of God, the word of God. So when you walk in the world, you start applying the word of God to your life. And the world will see you. The world will know you. Because by your fruit, you shall know. By your character. By the way you talk. By the way you walk. By the way you position yourself. Why? Because you have the word of God in you. You know how to walk. You know how to talk. You know how to communicate. Oh, because you have the greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You won't fall for the plan and the trap of the devils because you know their devices. Because the Bible teaches the devices of the devil. And he said we must be vigilant. But today the church has become a place. It's a dance hall. It's a club. Because all we go there to do is to get happy. But Solomon said there's a sign, time for everything under the sun. Time to laugh, time to cry, time to mourn, time to dance, time to plan, time to pluck up. There's a time for everything under the sun. The church of the living God, it's time that you get rooted and grounded in the word of God. We are living in the last days and the only thing you can stand on is the word of God. The Bible said before one of his words passed, heaven and earth will pass. It is the only rock we have to stand on. It is the only thing that's going to keep us when we go through troubles, when we go through tough times. It is the only way to know God is through the word. Uh, Dr. Lee reminds us that we know about God. Right. But we don't know God. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. We heard about him on the television. Yes. We heard about him in the Psalms. Yes. Oh, we heard pastors talk about him. Yes. But we don't know him for ourselves. For ourselves. It is a time and season that the church needs to know God for themselves. The church are in bondage to the KY because they don't know the word of God so that they can save their body and their soul from death. Many of us are going to raise back in this old world, old earth suit. We won't get a glorified body because we don't have the knowledge how to get our mind and our soul and out of bondage. We got to learn through the word of God. If not, we're living a mediocre life, not knowing who we are in Christ, church of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The apostle Paul pointed out that all Jews are in bondage under the element of the word, meaning touch not, taste not, anger not, in accordance with unto the Mosaic law. After the fullness of time had come, Christ came to do what? Redeem us from the law of Moses and to bring us out of bondage, which is the Mosaic law. Oh, hallelujah. The apostle then admonished the church to continue in the New Testament instead of the Old Testament. Otherwise, by then turning back to beggar, the, the beggar element, they're going back into the bondage that Jesus Christ had paid the price in full for church of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. They turn back to the beggar element Amen. to observe days. Yes. Is that what's going on? Yes, sir. Observe days. 
We as Christians, some of us, we only observe Sundays. Isn't it? Some of us, that's all it is. We get ready on Sunday. After that, that's it. In the week, you're miserable. You're tormented. But uh, come Sunday, you're righteous. Oh, hallelujah. It's not about a day. It is a continuous relationship. It's a lifestyle that you will live in the kingdom. It's putting on the character of Christ. It's molding yourself by the word of God to be like him, to become like him. Oh, hallelujah. So at the end of it all, you are going to be like him. Oh, hallelujah. That's the whole process. So we cannot be conformed to the things of this world, but we must be transformed by renewing our minds in the things of God. So that we are not in bondage, church of God. We want to be walking free in the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. It never mentioned about a day. What is the kingdom? Righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. He has never mentioned a day. So we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ every day. Yes, we gather on a Sunday, but it is not our purpose for only to be here on a Sunday. It is a day set aside to come together and to glorify God. But in every day and every moment, in every second of the day, God must be first in your life. Relationship must be strong. When you leave your house as married couple and you leave your wife at home and you go, go out, you're still married. It does not change because the relationship still stays intact. You only be away from each other for a moment, but you're still thinking about her. Oh, she is still thinking about you. I wonder what she's doing right now. I wonder what she's having for dinner. I wonder what she's for lunch. You're still thinking about that relationship. So it is with God. you got to have that relationship. This is what it's about. Now whatever you're doing, you're thinking about the king of all kings, the rock of all ages. You're trying to get closer to him. You're trying to know him better every day, every hour, every chance you get. Oh, hallelujah. It's not about observing a day. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. The apostle then admonished the church to continue in the New Testament instead of the Old Testament. Otherwise, if you turn back to the beggar element to observe days and months and times and here in accordance with the Mosaic law, they will again be entangled in bondage. Oh, hallelujah. Church of God, we don't want to be in bondage. We want to be free from bondage. We, oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, whom he has set free. Whom he has set free. Oh, hallelujah. Are you walking as a free man of God? Are you walking as a free woman of God? Are you walking as a child of the king? Are you walking as if a million, you're a million here? Are you walking as if the daddy owns everything? That the cattle and the hill is his. Oh, hallelujah, the gold mine is his. The iron the refinery is his. Everything on this earth belongs to him. You have the rich daddy. He is the king of all kings. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody can buy him out. Oh, hallelujah. Nobody can vote him in. Nobody can vote him out. Oh, hallelujah. Because he owns everything. Church of God, if you know who you are, you should be walking and talking and dancing in the king of all kings. Oh, hallelujah. As kingdom citizens, you should be walking and knowing and having confidence Amen. in the God that you serve. You don't need to be in bondage. He came to release you from bondage. He came so that he can have life. A life abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. We don't need to walk with the cares of the world. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We leave it there. Oh, hallelujah. We sing this song. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, don't let doubt. Don't let fear. Let nothing stop you. 
Oh, hallelujah. Find confidence. Amen. Knowing who you are in the word of God. Free your mind. Renew your mind. Yes. Let the word of God be in you. Yes. David said, write it. Yes. On the table of your heart. Right. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When you know who you are, you don't have to walk in bondage. You got to know that your daddy owns everything. The hurt is the Lord's. Oh, hallelujah. The hurt is the Lord's. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, I went, I was in Jamaica. And while I was in Jamaica, there we started a project on the small field. And when I look at the project and the, the price that they are quoted to do the project, and when the, 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 the guy didn't do the right thing, and everything seems to run over, and when it looked like we need an extra $200,000, I said, God, how is this going to happen? But you know what? Before I left Jamaica, right now, the field is supposed to be totally completed today. Amen. God caused everything to come together. Why? Because he owns everything. I heard the community so happy. They said politician couldn't do it. But Jesus can. Church of God, nothing is impossible with God. You see, that's what the church should be doing. Impacting their community. But instead, we want to take God's money and rob, please God, people and put the money in your pocket. Live big. While the people suffer in your community. And the church of the living God is in your community. If the church of the living God in your community, your community must change. Amen. If we are doing the thing that the God called us to do, our community will change. That's right. Amen. That's right. They said politicians couldn't do it. Oh, hallelujah. I thank God I serve a God that owns everything. Big, mighty God. Hallelujah. The tractor man, the truck man, they come together and it is done. To the glory of God. If it was a politician, they might have to leave it. But God said, I need it done, and they God gave them the mind to have it completed. Thank God for these truck truckers and these tractor man that God has allowed them to continue the work. Hallelujah. They had a mind and they trust God. Amen. That God wants to finish. It is God's business. And they recognize that God gave them the tractor. God gave them the truck. So they better get God's work done. That's right. That's right. That's right. Very true. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's not get entangled again in the yoke of bondage. I'm going to stop here today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I want the church to understand something. The more they have the word of God in you, the freer you're going to become. The less stress you're going to have. Because you're going to develop trust and confidence in the God that you serve. Money. Can't help us. This is only for a time. How many millionaires are dying? Think about it for a moment. How many millionaires are dying? Millions and millions of dollars. But it still can't save them. They still have no peace. They still have no Job. And listen what we have. Righteousness. Amen. Joy. Peace. And peace. In the Holy Ghost. They will want to buy that. And it's a free gift. Amen. And they still don't want it. Amen. This is crazy, isn't it, church? Yeah. Here's a free gift. All you have to do is translate out of the devil's kingdom. Into God's wonderful kingdom. Submit yourself to him. Yes. And he said, now you are in my kingdom. Yes. 
And if you renew your mind, it, it takes up work. And this is why the church exists today. Is that the church should teach God's people how to free their mind because they lack the knowledge. So the church needs to give the people of God the knowledge so they can live in this world as royal priesthood, as holy nation, set apart the ecclesia, the call of one, call out of darkness into his marvelous light so that you can live righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost, stress free. Amen. But instead, the church of God become a dance hall. That's right. That's what it turns out to be. You go to some of these churches like a rock band. Mm -hmm. They're just rocking. Mm -hmm. And when they finish rock, they call it the offerings. Mm -hmm. And when they finish the offerings, they ask. They talk for 10 minutes because God's people have no retention span. Attention span. So they can only last for 10 minutes. Because why? This is what the, what, this is what the world, this is what they make of us. When you go in your classroom, you know what my grandfather taught me many years ago and my parents had said this to me. He said, if you don't want your kids, there's two things that will stop your kids from learning. If they go to bed, if they lack sleep, if they go to school hungry. And this is what the church is doing today. Mm -hmm. We don't get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. And not enough of God's word. And even the physical food. Yes, because if we don't treat our bodies right, if we don't eat right and sleep right, all you're going to sit in the word of God. That's why everybody making all this noise to keep you happy. Mm -hmm. But guess who is the author of music? So you have to be careful, church. If they get drowned out with music and there's no, they, they're eating the life out of you because that's the only thing you're left to stand with. It's good to have praise and worship, yeah. but you must prepare yourself for the word. Yeah. Parents, encourage your kids to go to bed just like how you allow them to go to bed at proper time for school. That's right. The same should apply to the house of God. But many of us as Christians, we don't set the example for ourselves because we're too late watching TV at night and come to church sleeping. What do you expect the kids to do? That's right. We need to have a mind, a different mindset, church. Amen. Where we can come and we can hope in our hearts. Come with your books, come with your pens, come with your highlighters and write and study the word of God because we need it. Amen. In this day, we need it. Young people, you need it. Amen. Because it's going to worse. It's going to get worse every year. It's going to worse. That we can't dance our way out of it. No. Sure. Because before one of his words passed, heaven and earth is going to pass. Amen. And he said, at the end of it all, these are going to happen. Man become lovers of themselves. Fathers against sons. Mothers against daughters. All these things he says is going to come to pass. It's time for the church to wake up. Wake up, wake up, get our minds out of bondage. And get our minds in the right place. So that we can stand the test of time. Marriage are failing because we have no because we are ignorant of the thing the devil's devices. Our kids are not are getting into trouble. Because we are not doing what God has called us to do as parents. It is time the church start to pull our socks up. Amen. And get ourselves back out of bondage. Get back in line with the word of God. So that we and our children can see the freedom in Christ. And nobody can brainwash them. Right. If we allow people to brainwash our kids. We are in trouble church. As a Christian church, we need to edify ourselves and our children so they can, can stand in this world. Look at every day there's a new religion. Every day there's a new one. 
I went to Jamaica. I did not, I, in my time in Jamaica, I've never seen so many religions. There's religion popping up all over the place. What do you think they're there for? To destroy our generation. They're there to destroy what God wants to do among us as a church. Church, let's get in line. Let's just be vigilant. Get our minds out of bondage and get it in the right place where God wants us to be. Let's not suffer because we lack knowledge. Let's gain as much knowledge as we can because our life depends on it. God bless you. God cast his face to shine upon you and give you peace. We continue next week, God's willing. Uh, to God with the glory. Great things he has done. If you're here and you need prayer for anything, you can come and we'll pray with you. One shall taste a thousand, two shall put ten thousand to fly. So I want you to understand when you pray, you're one. You can chase a thousand, but two of you come together, you just make it for a fool. Amen. amen. So you have the authority to pray, but when somebody come and join with you, amen, greater things can happen. Amen. amen. So if you're here and you need prayer for anything, you could come as we sing a prayer refrain before we close. God bless you. Praise God. We're going to pray for Leo. Even now. Father, can the church stand with me? Hallelujah. Can we agree together? Glory to Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, mighty God, for Leo who is watching online today, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you know everything about him. Mighty God. He believed, Father God, that you can save body, soul, and spirit. But Father God, his first step, my God, is to come to you, Lord. And you said, God, if he confess his sin before you, you're faithful and just to forgive him of his sins. Father God, once, mighty God, his sins are forgiven by you, Lord. His spirit, mighty God, the Bible says, is sealed until the day of redemption. But then, Father God, he got to do some work, Father God. He got to work out his salvation with fear and trembling, meaning he has to do all the things of God, keep the commandments of Jesus Christ, mighty God, to save his body and his soul from hell. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray today for him, mighty God, that he will study, mighty God, the word of truth. Mighty God, he will study, mighty God, mighty God, the, the word of God. As Paul reminds us, study to show ourselves approved. Father God, that you will learn and mighty God to rightly divide the word of truth. I pray for his family. I pray, mighty God, for his children, his wife. I pray for everything, mighty God, that belongs to him around him. Everything, Father God, that his name, mighty God, is called upon Father God this morning. His house, his vehicle, everything that, mighty God, that he, mighty God, is with, that you have given him, Father God, mighty God, to beautify his life. I pray, mighty God, that your blessings will flow. I pray, mighty God, the Spirit of God will overshadow him. The old Spirit of God that lives with him, mighty God, will manifest in his doing, in his works, Father God. That, Lord, that you will mold him into your likeness, mighty God. Mighty God, you have given him, mighty God, an example, mighty God, of who he should be, mighty God, and what we are working for. We are working to be like you, Jesus Christ. And someday, mighty God, we'll be like you. You are the first fruit, mighty God that resurrected, mighty God, with a glorified body, and that's our job. That's what we are working for. At the end of our worship, at the end of our life on this earth, Father God, that we will have a glorified body. So, Father God, I pray that you'll touch him, mighty God. If there's sickness in this body, wherever it is, God, I pray and I declare healing for him right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I pray and I believe for him, mighty God, that, Lord, no weapon that form against him and his family Mighty God is going to prosper. Mighty God, because the weapon of world warfare it is not carnal, but it's mighty to God to be pulling down a stronghold. I pray, God, every stronghold of the enemy surrounding him and around his family has been broken in the name of Jesus Christ and Lord, given now, Lord. I pray the light of your glory will shine into him and in his heart. 
And Father God, that it be revived in you, his spirit and in his body, in his soul, mighty God. I pray, God, your divine will, your divine purpose will be accomplished in this life and in this family. And I pray you touch him, Father God. Meet him at the point of his need, Father God. As he reach out to you today, God, that you'll reach down and touch him, Father God. And touch his whole entire family. Touch his job. Touch everything, God, that he has. Mighty God, that you have blessed him with. And your name will be glorified in Jesus Christ's name. Can the church say amen? amen. Can the church say amen? amen? Father God, we thank you for him. And I pray the blessings of God over his family in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Father God, I want to thank you for the brethren in this church. I want to thank you for those who are here today. I want to thank you for those that are away. Mighty God, I thank you for those, mighty God, who are just, mighty God, have, have no other, mighty God, no, no other way, mighty God, but to be away from us today. But Lord, for those that could have been here, mighty God, and mighty God, have just decided not to be here. I pray you bless them as well. But I pray, God, you'll give them the zeal, mighty God, to be in your house. Mighty God, because in your house they can receive added blessings, Father God. Father God, I pray, Father God, for those who watch my line, mighty God, that you'll continue to just bless them, mighty God. I pray that they too will spread the word, mighty God, and allow others to come, mighty God, and to watch the program, and mighty God, and just to see your work, mighty God, and how great and how powerful you are. So, Lord, I thank you for the brethren. Thank you for everyone, mighty God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the word. Thank you for, mighty God, your apostles, mighty God, and yourself, Jesus Christ, who have left the word for us, mighty God, that we can walk and we can live and we can grow by it. So I thank you, mighty God. I pray for Dr. Lai mighty God, and, his, and the brethren back there. I pray, mighty God, for Minister Henry and the brethren back in Jamaica. I pray, mighty God, for Freetown Convention. Mighty God, I pray, Father God, for the people that will gather. Mighty God, that they will not gather, mighty God, as religious people. But they will gather as a child of God. Mighty God, as kingdom citizens of your kingdom. So Lord, I pray, mighty God, for Minister for Pastor Ricketts and his family. Mighty God. Mighty God, that has supported us greatly, mighty God, in Jamaica. Mighty God, I pray your divine will will be done for them. Mighty God, and wherever you take them in life, mighty God, that they will hold true to you, mighty God. Not to religion, mighty God, but to you, Jesus Christ. So I pray your blessings, God, throughout, mighty God, your people. Touch your people, mighty God, around the world. Preachers and teachers that teach in your word. I pray your blessings over their life. I honor you, and I give you thanks, I give you praise, I give you glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. And amen. Hallelujah. 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 Before we close, can we just sing this one verse of this song? To God be the glory, great things he has done. So
so that we could stay back and hear the details on what she needs to talk with us about. That'd be a blessing. The journal session is meeting until Thursday, 7.30 at Eastside Shady Church for prayer. Session of meetings until Thursday, evening, Eastside City Church. But now, which, now which shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? But shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? But shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Praise the Lord.